Welcome. This is a tactical technician video from Diagnation. And um, basically, I, I don't have what you see is a still shot of uh, eight channels. Um, the I guess I can title this video um, Cam Sensor Backup. I want to see how well the cam sensor can back up a crank sensor that goes south. It's non existent. For one reason or another, the crank sensor has an inability to function properly and does not give a signal. And how well the engine will start on. Um, just the cam sensors then we'll get it down to um, one cam sensor. how well will this engine do on uh, either uh, an intake cam sensor or an exhaust cam sensor if it was down to just one so anyway we see a still shot here and i will talk about the um the eight channels i'll go down one at a time we'll go a through g um a is blue and blue is a uh, is our feed to our right here that is the feed to the crank sensor that's a full volt this is a magneto resistive i believe it's magneto resistive or hall effect nonetheless it's a three wire sensor and a would be the feed to power that sensor uh b uh red is the actual signal that's the crank signal c green is the ground for the um for the crank sensor just want to make a point um these are all critical Whenever we have a crank sensor under suspicion for a no start, a, a code, a correlation issue, anything, we always, with our multi-channel scope, we want to get all three. We want to get the power, the ground, and the signal to see if we have any dropouts uh, that may be causing a problem with that, with that signal. Um, channel D, gold, is the intake cam sensor here. Channel F, purple, is the exhaust cam sensor here. You can see it's got a little encoded hitch right here that makes it a little different than the... Uh, than the intake cam, that little buddy thing right there. That's what makes it unique. Channel um, F gray is the ignition trigger for uh, cylinder one. That's the one, that's basically that would be the dwell or the trigger to fire the ignition one coil. Um, channel G oranges, I'm gonna go just, this is across the battery. This is just our battery voltage. So kind of this capture was taken running. So if we looked at this guy, uh, we would say that uh, we are about, uh, well, no, I got the wrong. Okay, that's about 13 and change. I, this this capture was taken running, so this is a that's the charging system. Um, that channel H Burgundy is the current ramp of all the fuel injectors. So we're going to see uh, basically what happens when a uh, when a signal goes away. But you got to think about the input and the output. It's really vital to think about. Um, the fuel and the spark happening at the right time. That's really what makes the engine run. So the PCM's got to, uh, um, I guess, work at a disadvantage if it doesn't get a, a high priority input, say from a, a crank sensor. So uh, we'll see how it's able to decipher where everything is, where the crank, crank angle is, and uh, to start injecting fuel and creating spark. So basically I'm gonna start out with, a, the first capture is gonna be a running capture. This is gonna be normal. We're gonna kind of take a running capture and we're gonna analyze it and then just kind of, kind of, kind of look at what normal is, so we can make a comparison to a, a problem. So I'm gonna crank the engine. Okay, that was a running capture. We'll roll that back and take a look at it. Um, let's go back to the first capture. Okay, and we cranked, and we could see our participants starting to come. A little bit of latency, there we go. Okay, we started a crank here. Um, here's our, here's, our, here's kind of a validation that we're cranking that battery voltage like here. That's, that's the voltage drop. That drops down to about, I'm gonna say nine volts. I'm not gonna run the cursor, but you guys got an idea. You see the, the that's kind of our cranking. So the PCM is kind of getting its, uh, its bearings together as far as where everybody is. You can see our voltage is strong to the crank in blue. Our crank signal starts to be created. Our ground is good. We got voltage drop. That's from the cranking. You can see the hashy parts of all these signals. The cam, the two cam sensors look good. They're in correlation. Our, our voltage is starting to pick up. This is probably cranking right here. And then we get the next, the next shot will be running. Um, we do have a non-sequential shot of the current which is normal in cranking as the pcm learns its angles that's right here that would be it looks like it's double the amperage so it probably fired two injectors in unison so you double the amperage in that case and then it went completely sequential ignition started here here's a fire cycle and then the next ignition and it looks like it's on its way to running normally so basically here's our normal capture right here and um 
that's that's the situation that's ideal uh no problems here there's the current ramping of the coils here's the ignition trigger for one our, our two cam sensors our crank sensor are good our power to the crank is good our ground is good at the crank sensor and our battery voltage is charging is a charging voltage so anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna do something now i'm gonna try to start it and uh i'm gonna take away the crank signal i'm gonna do it by lifting its ground and we're gonna see what happens this, i'm gonna do it right from the get-go so this is gonna see how well this thing does um i guess pretty much without a crank signal so take a look i'll roll it and get it cranking Extended crank there, which is most likely expected. Let me uh, slow her down, and we'll roll her back and analyze. Let me cut the tire off. Okay, you heard that extended crank. We'll go back to the first frame and look at everything. Uh, okay. We we'll start to have action. Right here, okay, we're cranking here. You can see everything, our, our crank and voltage go low. Um, and we can see what we're missing here. We do not have a crank signal. The ground has been lifted, okay? The ground's lifted, which is super critical. You can see our ground elevated. So we gotta deal without a crank signal. So far, we have no spark and fuel here. We're full, we have no trigger. We have no injection pulse because we have no current ramp. Our, our PCM is starting to say, hey, what's going on here? I've got, I'm working at a disadvantage now. I got to kind of deduce what's going on. So let's go to our next capture. And we start to have some action. We start to get fuel and spark here. There's definitely a delay. Our cam, our, our, our cam signals are good. And we start to run. The PCM's kind of made its decisions um, without a crank signal. And it's off and running. There was an extended crank. It took a little extra time. But nonetheless, it, it, it was able to do that. So obviously, no, no, the red signal should be, a, it is not, a, we see no crank signal there. Um, we still have power there and our ground is high too, which would depict an open ground circuit in the crank sensor. Cam sensors are good and uh, basically that is running. So let me see, um, our next situation is going to be um, how well the engine does with a um, cam sensor disconnected. It, uh, so let's see, um, let me disconnect the intake cam. Take cam disconnected. We're gonna get the crank sensor back working and we'll see what we got here. We'll just take a capture. Let me, let me kind of stop the scope and I'll crank it with intake cam disconnected. We were able to run, had a little extended crank there. Um, that that did it with a uh, with the intake cam missing. So let's keep going down and see what we got here. Analyze our signals. Okay, here we here we got. We'll get back to the cranking area. Okay, we're cranking right here. We see the voltage dropping. We got a uh, we got power to the crank. We got a crank signal. We do not have an intake cam signal. Um, we were a little delayed on our spark and the fuel, probably causing our extended crank. We have an exhaust cam signal in purple. Uh, our ground is strong on the crank. Let's go to the next screen. And now we start to get action. We, we, have, our, um, we have our ignition right here in gray, as you can see. Let me get that so we can see it. Um, basically, that's our ignition right here, right here in gray. Here's our crank, you see that? That little hash you remember would depict we had a lot of voltage drop or cranking. It took a while to crank. That's uh, that's pretty strong. Probably uh, you'd maybe get a customer complaint or something if you had to have an ex extended crank. It's kind of, you can see this, you know, the le the lack of hashiness once the car is running on the combustion process on the fuel and the spark. So nonetheless, it took a little extra time, but it did it. It did it without an intake cam sensor. So um, anyway, I will plug that sensor back in and then we'll see what it does without an exhaust cam sensor. Anyway, let me get back there.
exhaust exhaust cam up, unplugged. See what we uh we got and roll it back to uh the beginning and see what's going on. Okay. This is with just the exhaust cam sensor disconnected. Okay, here we go. All right, we're cranking here, and we see that familiar pattern. Voltage dropping during cranking. We have, we're have we strong to the crank. The feed is good to the crank. The crank signal is there. The intake signal is good. You can see there. We do not have an exhaust uh, position uh, signal, obviously, right here. This line is flat right here. Um, it takes a long time. Uh, we're not getting spark, as we can see in the gray. We're not get, we're getting occasional injectors trying to. We got, a, we got an ignition trigger here. We got a... I guess a gang fired or at least two injectors firing in unison here while we get double the amperage. Let's see to the next screen. Uh, we go a while, we don't have spark. Then we spark, well, comes and goes. Um, our injection looks a little confused. We've got the double hitch here. Um, it looks like it's still struggling. And we tried again and we got. We don't have ignition. We don't have any fuel. This is with the exhaust. Uh, now we get some fuel back. Um, then we have a gap. We got spark. Uh, the thing is cranking. Then it sort of started to run a little bit here. Um, and then it kind of quit. I'm going to try this again. Let's see what we got now. If uh, if I, this thing can actually run without with the exhaust cam sensor um, disconnected. Ran. It's like a roulette wheel, you know, sometimes you're lucky it's there and sometimes it's not. So let's go back to the beginning and uh, take a look at our cranking this engine without an exhaust cam signal. Okay, here we go. We're cranking right here. Right here, we're cranking. Um, no fuel, no spark. Uh, takes a while before we get our first there's our double hitch our our, unit, our our injector pulse together at least two injectors in in, in harm at the same exact time there's a spark it's starting to speed up our engine's starting to run them it looks like it's running over here so it took a while um see that the disadvantage when the pcm doesn't have good input it takes a while for it to make its calculations it's uh it's not a fast start without a uh without all the participants um, in this in in the situation, but anyway, um, that is without a um, exhaust cam signal. Um, I will probably consider a part two of this, um, but we can see how important those signals are, and when the PCM is at a disadvantage with, um, you know, the high priority speed inputs, you know, the cam signals or the crank signal, it's going to take a little extra time to crank. But anyway, um, take care and uh, and. I all the best and ending the video. Bye-bye.